what I want to talk about for my subject is called Backlog Your Life. And this is a, what you would call in neuro-linguistic terms, a framing device. Um, for those not familiar with that, framing device is kind of, it's almost, it's like metaphors. It's how you, how you picture things in your head or how you make sense of them. One of Joe's favourites, Maslow Hierarchy of Needs, is a framing device which is just a, a way of representing kind of like your brain's primal instinct about it's almost survival mode of how you kind of take care of the, the basic things before you take care of the more complex ones. And Maslow put that into like a, a pictogram and that's what you call a framing device because it's a way of explaining that and, and spelling it out to people or making it clear. Um, in fact, the survival instinct is another way of framing that same thing. And there's, there's loads of different ways to frame versions of the same thing and one of the things i always say to people it's, it's down to you to kind of find what fits with you what matches your personality and what behaviors what resonates with you and how can you then use that to help understand things and more importantly implement things and utilize them backlog is a framing device it comes from it's, it's an it kind of term that's now spilled out into business and project management all that stuff overall and a backlog is effectively a to-do list Nothing more, nothing less. But like everything, it's the nuances and how you look at it and how you, you then manage that. So if you were working in like an IT team or something, developing software, you'd list out all the things you need to do to make or improve whatever it is you're, you're doing. So if you've, well, this that we're on now, Zoom. Zoom, whoever makes Zoom, the Zoom Corporation, would have a list of all their things to improve. And as you start to see new functioning come in, improvements, performance get better, et cetera, et cetera, that's them working through their backlog and implementing these things. Now, what you do when you've got a backlog is you then prioritize things, you know, you size how long it will take, you assess the value, you use that to kind of then put it in an order of what you want to do first, and you move things from your backlog to your action plan and you work on them and you constant and then you you finish your your actions and you come back to your backlog and you take new stuff off and you constantly refine and add to etc etc and i like that as a way of working it's not for everyone there's lots of other ways to do lists but i find it useful and what i decided to do at the start of this year and this is what i have referenced a little bit in conversation on a few podcasts um but i know it's definitely working for me now so i want to talk about it i've started to put my life on that and not my life as a whole but my to-do stuff. So last year, I kind of hit on the, this concept of little and often, because I'm a nightmare to myself that if I've got a job to do and I think it will take me four hours, I'm, I'd always be like, oh, I just, there's not enough time. I need to wait till I've got four hours to do that. I've only got a couple of hours there. I probably can't do it. And I'd put stuff off unless I could do all of it or certainly a sizable amount to feel like I've made big progress. So, you know, you'd wait until a Saturday or a Sunday and then that eats up most of your day or you don't have time to do it or, or whatever else. Whereas I could take that four hour job and divide it into chunks and decide I'm going to spend an hour a day on that. Now, in reality, there's a little bit of whatever you're doing, whatever it is, you know, it could be a DIY thing. It could be writing a book. It could be I've decided to start painting or learning a musical instrument, whatever it is, it's a thing. And there will be set up time and there'll be put away time. And that put me off even more because I'd be like, well, it's not even an hour because I've got to take five minutes to set up, five minutes to put away. I've probably only got 45 minutes on it. That's even less. But stepping back from that, if I've got a job that takes four hours and I could dedicate 45 minutes a day to it with that tidying stuff up and putting stuff away, over the course of five days, I could get that job done. I don't need to wait until a four hour gap. I just do little and often. Pottering progress, I actually heard that referred to today by someone in, in how they do it. Like you're potting around doing bits and you're getting stuff done, but you're making progress. And I, I had to, and I know that's probably really simple to a lot of people and it's quite obvious, but I really had to force my thinking to accept that those little bits of progress and things were as good as making those big, big changes. And I started to do that last year. We talked about it on and off and I got lots of stuff done. We managed to, in the house, decorate three rooms by me using that sort of, that sort of mentality. But I'd also drift a little bit where I would get, I'd be making use of that time, but I'd kind of fall into comfort activities a bit back to i think we were talking the other week during a prioritization about stuff that you do because you like it or it feels easy and I, I fell into some of those jobs sometimes where i'd cycle around on them and not i'd keep something going but i wouldn't really make any progress and i, would, I was consciously aware of that so i think i've made a step forward but i'd fallen into a routine if you like of it again and it it became its own form of procrastination in a way uh -huh.